my standards of the 20s, well, you know, I didn't believe in weekends back then, uh, not to mention vacations. When we started off, uh, we, we, we literally only had like one computer, and so it would be our web server during the day and I'd code at night. We're asked about work-life balance all the time, and my view is that's a debilitating phrase because it, um, it implies there's a strict trade-off, and the reality is if I'm happy at home, I come into the office with tremendous energy. Living I believe in life Out here living I believe in life Every day we living I believe in life What's it like we living I believe in life Living life yeah so we grinding it out Every single day we be grinding it out What's it like we living I believe in life oh, I believe in life oh. Most people over the last 200 years or so whoever they, the wealthiest person in the world was didn't usually work that hard when they got to be 60 or so they kind of took life easy you seem to be working pretty hard what motivates you to still work so hard well I love my work the work of the foundation is super interesting I get to meet with the scientists I get to go out in the field I do think your habits are sort of set in your 20s and 30s and by my standards of the 20s, well, you know, I didn't believe in weekends back then, uh, not to mention vacations. So I'm you know, fairly lazy compared to myself in my 20s, where I was a true uh, fanatic. Uh, you know, all I believed in was working on software night and day, and, and for my 20s, that was perfect. I didn't have a wife or family uh, at all, and my role was very hand, hands-on role. That show was on for 25 years yeah. in Chicago, and um, when you did it, you won, I think, almost 50 Emmy Awards, and it was voted one of the best TV shows in the history of TV. So you ended it, though, after 25 years to do other things, and we'll talk about that, but you no regrets about ending that show. No, no, reg no regrets whatsoever. You know, I, I didn't want to be punch drunk in the ring, still trying to... Uh, come up with what is the next thing, what is the next thing, because over the years we became our own greatest competition. So when I first started, uh, went national in 1986, every time there'd be another talk show, I'd be, oh, Geraldo Rivera, oh, what are we gonna do? And then I realized a couple of years in that you run your own race better than anybody, if you take the time to see what everybody else is doing, you lose your ground. And that I could be a better me than I could be anybody else, and so no need of trying to compare myself to other people. When I started the first uh, internet company, Zip2, um, uh, with my brother and, and another person, um, yeah, Greg Curry, the, uh, it wasn't really with the thought of being wealthy. It, it, you know, I've got nothing against being wealthy, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to that later too. <laughs> but but it's just it it was just from the standpoint of wanting to be part of the, the internet and uh, I, I I figured if we could make enough money to just get by it would be that would be okay. Um, and when we when we started off uh, we 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 literally only had like one computer and so it would be our web server during the day and I'd code at night um, and we we just got a a, a small office um, uh, in, in Palo Alto back when rent was not insane. Um, and uh, it, it cost us like $450 a month. It was cheaper than an apartment, so we actually just slept in the office and then, sh and then shower at the YMCA at Page Mill Al Camino. So we'd walk over there and, and, and shower. And, uh, and that was, um, actually I think, uh, that was when I, f we first, I first met you, by the way. Um, and uh, so, I don't know if how many people, no, probably not many people know this, but uh, uh, we actually pitched uh, Steve in like January 96 on uh, the, the Zip2 business plan. Uh, and actually, I thought um, Steve was actually one of the most up to speed on, on, on what actually was in our business plan. Most, most of the people <laughs> we met did not actually read our business plan. Um, in fact, a lot of people, we, a lot of venture capitalists we met at the time didn't even know what the internet was. Or, or they've never used, they'd never used well, it. Sure, they didn't think I'm not sure if we still do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm talking like, you know, sort of well-known people on Sand Hill. I was like, wow, okay. Um, but, but at the time, nobody had made any, any money on the internet, so I guess uh, that's, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't really clear evidence that, that there was, was a business. This work-life harmony thing is what I try to teach young employees, actually and senior executives at Amazon too, but especially the people come in, I get, we're asked about work-life balance mm -hmm. all the time. And my view is that's a debilitating phrase because it, um, it implies there's a strict trade-off and the reality is, if I'm happy at home, I come into the office with tremendous energy. 
And if I'm happy at work, I come home with tremendous energy. And so it actually is a circle. It's not a balance. And, um, and I think that that is, uh, is worth everybody paying attention to. You want to have, you never want to be that guy. And we all know, we all have a coworker who is that person who as soon as they come into the meeting, they drain all of the energy out of the room. Mm. You can just feel the energy level go. That you don't want to be that guy. So you want to come into the office and give everybody a kick in their step. You have over a hundred billion dollars of cash. Um, Berkshire does. Yeah. Maybe you do. Um, you, Berkshire has over a hundred billion in cash, and you say that you always want this company to be a fortress. So, how much cash should an ordinary investor have on a percentage basis? Do you think it, it depends on their personal situation? I mean, it, 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 uh, if if you if, you, if you're working in something where you're you're living off your 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 paycheck from, from week to week, you want to have a little cash around, and and you certainly don't want to have a credit card that's maxed out or anything like that. Uh, but if you know if if your house is paid off, if you don't have big living expenses, you got a portfolio of of decent diversified businesses. Uh, you don't really need any cash. One of the things that I think we've done well is, is just giving the people at the company a lot of opportunity, right? So, you know, it's not just me who started when I was 19 and, and now, you know, I'm running this big company. There were a number of people who joined who were, you know, people I did problem sets with at Harvard or they dropped out of Stanford or, you know, different programs who have grown with the company over this long period of time. And, you know, one of the things that I'm the most proud of is we have about 12 different product groups at the company. And all of the people who are running them, um, with the exception of, of uh, one, uh, did not join the company running a product group or reporting to me. That's amazing. Um, and the one exception was is David Marcus, who was the CEO of a you know, fifty billion dollar public company. So, um, you know, so I'm pretty happy that that that, that he's on board and, and having him run a product group. I think is a pretty big coup too. But literally, none of them started off reporting to me. Um, you know, they all start off in different in different roles. Some were engineers, some were data analysts, um, some were product managers, and they've all grown. But I think what happens is, you know, people see that you create opportunities for people, and and that also I think keeps the best people engaged and makes the best people want to come work at your company because they feel like, oh, I'm going to get those kind of opportunities too. I think everybody can be successful if you really try, try hard. I studied Alibaba in 1999 in my apartment. I talked to the 18 founders that one, thing we, one of the things we want to prove if Jack Ma and his team can be successful, 80% of the people in the world, they can be successful because we don't have money, we don't have technology, we don't have almost nothing. The only thing is that we believe in the future and start to do little by little.